All right, what's up, fight fans? Your boy Nick, Nick Portella, MMA dot com. I have on the phone arguably the man who stole UFC Winnipeg, uh, Josh Emmett. How you doing, Josh? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Uh, absolutely, anytime. Um, so congratulations on a huge win. Um, a lot of good things, uh, you know, came from the win, and uh, I, you know, there's we'll just get right into this. There's uh, pages and pages of things we could talk about. <laughs> so, um, so you were last in the cage before Winnipeg uh, in October, uh, winning a unanimous decision. Uh, you took a, a short notice fight against, a, you know, a grizzled veteran, number three, uh, Ricardo Lamas. Was the opportunity just too good to? to pass up even though it was short notice? Yeah, it was, um, you know, it was a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You know, I, I wasn't ranked in the division, and so this would have never happened for me if it wasn't a short notice fight, you know. So uh, just kind of what had happened with the whole Jose Aldo, Aldo um, fight since he had to bump up to fight Holloway, um, it, it was presented to me. They asked Sean Shelby asked everyone in the top 15. Um, no one wanted that fight on short notice, uh, especially against the dangerous Ricardo Lamas. And my hat was kind of thrown in the, or my name was thrown in the hat. And uh, yeah, it, it, it went to me, and um, I, I was just stoked for the opportunity. And, and, and I've been wanting this. These are the fights I've been wanting since I got into it. I'm, I'm older than most, and um, I think I'm one of the best in the world. So. I, 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 you know, hopped all over the, uh, the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. So now, even though it was short notice and your last fight was, did go the distance, um, honestly, did you feel a hundred percent going into it? I mean, cause you just had a fight and you know, you took it in three weeks and with everything going on, did, did you feel like you were at your best walking in there? Oh no, no, not at all. <laughs> um, I, uh, so I, I fought seven weeks prior to uh, the Winnipeg card, and after that, you know, I I stayed in um, Gdansk, Poland, because that's where I fought. I stayed there for a few days, and then my wife and I went to Copenhagen, Denmark, um, did some sightseeing, you know, ate, enjoyed ourselves. I went to Chicago to visit my uh, my grandpa and my cousins, aunts, aunts and uncles, with my mom, and we just, uh, you know, I ate a ton, and... Um, you know, just just enjoyed myself, partied here and there. But I I got back into the gym probably two weeks after the fight. And um, just because I was helping teammates, a lot of teammates were getting prepared for other fights and they right. were asking for my help. So I, I was in there just kind of, you know, at their need, whatever they needed me to do to be, you know, just to act as their opponent or just drill with them. But there was by no means was I in, in camp or even I wasn't even – you know, doing all the practices, I was just strictly helping certain people and, and cornered, um, you know, a, a few teammates that are up and coming uh, through that time, too. And then once I kind of got the, um, I don't know, even this was just kind of thrown out there, um, that's when I was like, oh, crap, I could be fighting because I planned on fighting in January. So they were looking for an opponent, um, you know, whether it be the St. Louis card January 14th or the right. Boston card January 20th. And so that we we're kind of like going back and forth, just trying to find an opponent. And then this was put out there and I was like, oh man, I need to get in camp. So I really, I trained for two weeks um, and I, I was not in, you know, fight, the best shape. I, I'm always in good shape compared right. to normal people, but by no means was I in fight shape. And uh, so I had to lose a lot of weight, get on a strict diet. I ramped up my training like no other. I was practicing like three, four times a day, but I was also... I was sick. I had a um, a cold, and I'm still getting over that. So it was right. just like a, a cold that's been going around. I was really congested. My my chest felt like I had a, a lot of um, like pressure and fluid in there as well. So I I got my doctor to give me a Z pack just so I could hopefully kick it right. a little faster. And uh, yeah, just it was the the toughest two week training camp of my life. But I can see that conversation, Doc. It's a once in a lifetime chance. You need to fix me right now. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly, and he, and, he, and he's on board. I, I got a whole team behind me, so uh, they've supported me since the beginning, and and we're all in this together. So, uh, yeah, it was just it was just the opportunity, though. Like I, I kept saying, I'm like, it's a fight whether I'm sick 
or, you know, injured or whether I'm a little tired or out of shape, it's a fight. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to fight my ass off no matter what, um, the circumstance is. And, uh, I was going in there to win the fight and I'm going in there to win the fight every time. Like, I think I'm one of the best in the world and I'm not going to stop until I am a world champion. And then once I become a champion, then I have to defend my belt. Right. And, and the grind paid off. So I actually saw an interesting comment, I think on your social media, um, that I just thought was really interesting that you said that missing weight to you almost felt like a loss. And the funny part about that is I can't recall you ever missing weight. I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't ever recall you missing weight. Was that like the first time ever? Yeah, it was the, the first time in my life. Um, you know, I've wrestled since I was a little kid all the way through college. I've, I've you know, I fought as an amateur, as a professional regionally, and, uh, yeah, I never missed weight. So that was it, – it, it did feel – it felt like a loss. And, you know, I, I really didn't experience a loss. Like, I, I know what it feels like to lose. I've lost big matches in college. So when people are like, oh, you know, you learn – from a loss, it's really important, and and I was all along when I was undefeated saying like I know what it feels like to lose. I don't want to feel that. Not that a way. good feeling. You know? No, not at all. You know, and and then I I got that split decision loss when I was fighting at 155, and, yeah. and that was a that was like a like a real not dep- it was kind of depressing, but a real tough pill pill to swallow because I felt like I won that fight. I felt like I won two rounds out of the three rounds, but since I right. fought him in his hometown. I felt like I got hometown. So, like, if he would have, like, knocked me out or just beat me up the whole time, I can accept that. But I had a blemish on my record to a fight that I feel like I won. So, that was home field advantage. Home field advantage got you. Yeah, and that was really disappointing. And so, this is how the – that not making weight, it almost felt worse. Like, I was, like – I did not – I don't know. I was so just disappointed and just upset with myself. And, man, I I just, like, had my head down, and I was just, like – just not doing good and and my coaches after a while they're like man you got to get over this like we're gonna fight like don't let this ruin the opportunity that you got but I just man it was it was so tough for me to shake that but then I just had to after the ceremonial weigh-ins I just had to say like you know what I'm here to fight even though it's it's disappointing that I missed the weight it's in the past I'm moving forward like this is a bigger opportunity so uh yeah it was it was tough (laughs) Well, you know what? The MMA community will give you the pass. Sick, short notice against one of the most dangerous guys in the division. You're you're allowed to get the pass on that one because listen, nobody wanted to step up and fight him anyway. Yeah, and that, and that's yeah. what I felt like I kind of saved the, yeah. the show. There there would have been no fight, and then I still get all this criticism from all these people on social media. But it's like they don't know anything about fighting or cutting weight. They they just don't know anything, you know, in, in general about this stuff. I think they just troll people, but it's uh, it's still – it's a little – it pisses me off a little bit, you know. Or people don't even know that I fought at 45s before. That's how much that they they don't know anything about the sport. They think it was my first fight, and I've never made it. And I'm like, I just fought seven weeks ago. I can make the weight, and right. I will make the weight every time from here on out, but I will never take a short notice fight like you that. You know what, though? You, you have to, you're never going to please everybody on social media, uh, and <laughs> you're always going to have somebody who hates your success. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's so it's not even, you know, it's not even worth it. So co-main event, stole the show, I think, in Winnipeg. Brutal knockout. Um, coming into the fight, though, and – do you think maybe they possibly underestimated your power, maybe a little bit? Yeah, kind of, kind of going into this because I, I know I know you have like that wicked overhand, uh, like it's it's almost like the left hook from hell wasn't expected and to be as powerful. What do you what do you think about all that? No, I think uh, it's so different. So I kind of feel like they maybe underestimated the power. I, I think a lot of people do. So. Just like from my my viewpoint, I always, you know, when I'm I'm, I'm watching tape on my opponent, I, I see what they do to other people, and even like the Felipe Arantes fight, like he's a good guy, like that's his thing on his feet. And if you watch any of his fights, he's had 31 pro fights, and that guy always wins the exchanges and dominates people when they're standing up. So I watch this, and I'm just like, you know, I give I give my opponents just a lot of respect, you know, but then once I get in there, 
you know, I, I think I give them too much respect. And when I'm moving around and they, they hit me, I'm like, man, that, that is not a, that much power. You know, I expected it to be way greater than that. And, and, but I think a lot of people, you know, I watch my fights too. And people are like, Oh, all he has is the overhand, right? I'm like, okay, you're right. I am going to throw the overhand right a lot, but I guarantee whether it's in 15 minutes or 25 minutes, I'm going to hit you with that overhand right a handful of times, and it only takes a clean shot. But even, you know, I've been working with my boxing coach for so long, and, and I think I'm dangerous from everywhere. And he was even saying before, you know, he's like, my jab, my left hook, he said, is so powerful. And, um, you know, our whole thing was we're going to, we're going to show people the the left hand because he's going to be aware of the right hand. So mm-hmm. I was working a lot of like feints on the right side to come up with jabs or hooks or even everything that we've been, uh, we just, we're working on bringing back the hook. So I threw that overhand right, commit to it a lot. And he was just like, bring back the left hook. And, and that's all we needed to do. And Lamas had a tendency, if you watch a lot of his fights when he's, throws a kick or he he throws you know a combination uh he always has that right hand low and he's like if you if you bring the hook back you're gonna knock him out and he even had a text my boxing coach joey uh he sent out to his dad like a week ago or i think it was fight week he said watch josh is gonna knock him out with a left hook and uh and that's exactly so, so here's what, what we learned we know that even if the overhand isn't clean and you hit gloves it hurts and that will probably be the last time that anyone underestimates any part of your striking game. So I, I feel like your opponents coming up will will be more aware. Uh, the other thing I noticed was once that punch landed, you didn't even motion to jump on him. Did you know as soon as that did it was just a walk off? Like I got all of it and and that's it. Yeah, no, I knew I knew right away. The uh, man, everything, and it's funny. Like even listening to commentators and stuff, they're like, "Oh, Josh is." All he throws is everything is 100% power. He loads everything up. But I feel like my conditioning is so good that I that's just the way I fight. Like, I don't touch people. Like, I'm throwing every punch or kick or elbow I'm throwing. It, it has bad intentions behind it. So, it's with a purpose. Yeah. No, I'm, way, I'm trying no to wasted punches. Fight. Exactly. I, and, and it is good. Like, I love the Diaz brothers style, you know how. But they're, they're, they pepper people up, pepper people up, and it's just like, that that output and that volume of punches, you know, um, just like hurts people, and then they ramp it up towards the end. But for me, it's just I I go in there thinking I'm going to try to do that, but then I can't. So I'm just like, I can fight for 15 minutes nonstop doing that, and my training is a hundred times harder than the actual fight itself. So uh, yeah, I'm trying to end the fight with any punch, but as soon as I connected, I I, I knew it was over. I I just felt it through my, my glove, and it was, uh, like I said before, it was like the perfect placement. I saw him fold over and just fall straight back, and his head bounce off, like hit the ground, and I, and I knew right there. So there was, no, there was no reason for me to jump on him and hit him again because you could that could have been like I could have. I could have jumped on him. The rep was way behind me and just like pulled a dick move and like, you know, hit him with a hard elbow or a huge punch like Dan Henderson did to Michael Bisping. But, man, that's – That one might have been warranted, though, a little bit. Uh, you never, yeah, you know, no, I, I, understand, <laughs> I understand that. Like, maybe if – But, yeah, you don't, you're not trying to hurt a guy. It, it, it is a sport at the end of the day. Yeah, and, like, we are in the hurt business. And, you know, as sick as it is, the fans probably would have loved that, too. But Probably. Like, I have – you know, I – I just think, man, it's like that could be a career-ending blow to the head, you know, something like that. I'm telling you, for no reason, too. For no yeah. reason, he he was out. He was out for a long time, out cold, and that's that is not good. It's not like he woke up, you know, 30 seconds. He was out for minutes, like out cold. And you could tell he was out as he was tipping over, like it on connection. He was out. It wasn't. Oh, like he was out. Yeah, he, yeah, he was out at all. No, not at all. He, he pulled it over, and that was that was it you know and 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 like i said in my like other interviews you know i was celebrating i was excited and then i looked over he was still out and then i just i i couldn't celebrate anymore and then that's when i just you know wish him the best and i took a knee and just i pray that he's you know he nothing is seriously wrong with him because his family was there you know right. well that just shows your class level that's that's all that is it's that's that's just the classy way to do it you won the fight and you know 
But now the important question, you're 13-1, and 4-1 and one in the UFC, uh, and we already touched on it, but your one loss was a questionable split decision, all right? So yeah. Lamich goes down to six. You catapult yourself from unranked to five. I mean, that's like Christmas come early. Yeah. Um, and, it, I mean, by the way things are shaping up, it kind of looks like for you there should be a title run in, you know, once the New Year hit, hits, it's, you know, time to grind. So you have, like, Holloway, Holloway Strayton, Edgar next, most likely. Yeah. Aldo's up in the air. Ortega just beat Swanson. That's, they're the only ones above you in the rankings. Who Who would you want next? Yeah, so uh, I've been getting asked this question a lot. For me, I, I, I'm pretty sure Edgar and Holloway are going to fight. You know, that, that fight needs to happen. It was going right. to happen. So I, I totally understand that. Um, and then as far as Aldo, you know, I, I don't think there's any purpose in me fighting him now. He, his last four fights, he's he's lost three of them. Right. And then Cub just lost to Ortega, like you said. Yeah. On this finished Cub. Uh, so – you know, Ortega and I are both on. Um, we got some hype behind us. We, we're the new blood in the division at the top. So I think it's most it makes most sense that Ortega and I fight uh, for the number one contender spot. The winner of us gets the winner of uh, Edgar Holloway. Man, I'll tell you, that would be a fight. Uh, I, I think everyone would like to see. You're like you're like the people's champion. You catapulted yourself right in there because not only did you bump yourself up to a super respectable spot, but you're also just a nice guy. Like, outside of the whole thing, you're just like a regular guy, and, and that's great for the sport, you know what I mean? Like, you're the guy that'll stop and say hi to his fan. Yeah, and, and I, I you know, and, time, like, people don't even know, I like, I don't know, people that, they're amazed that I actually fight, you know, it's like, oh, he actually fights, you know, but maybe looking at me, people think, I don't know, because the, the shaved head, they think I'm, like, intimidating, but I talk to him, they're like, oh, he's a really nice guy, and that. Uh, like he fights, and then, but I, I can turn on a switch when I'm when I'm about to fight when that uh, that octagon cage door gets uh, locked, you know. But uh, it's all different it, then. Yeah, it's all it's all what it's about, you know. Like I, I've seen other like athletes and and fighters that man, they're just full of themselves and they're they're rude or dicks to the fans. And man, I I don't know. I, I was a fan. Like I've been a huge fan of MMA since before it was mainstream, and I was watching the pay per views uh, when I was in high school. So it's like. And and I would always love to go like my favorite fighter of all time when I was like growing up was Tito Ortiz and I right. you know and I got a picture with him and he was cool and I love to get pictures with the the fighters and um, so I, I I know what it feels like so I'll always you know give tons of time back to the fans and, and as much as I can you know it's just right. well it's you were a fan I mean, we're, yeah you know you were a fan yeah and we're just we're just ordinary people it's like there's no need to. I don't know, talk down or be a dick to somebody. But uh, yeah, yeah. you guys are not like any other athletes. I will say that. You, it, it's it's a totally different, um, I don't know, maybe because it's legitimately the hurt business, these are nicer outside. Or, but, like, <laughs> you, you, couldn't inter, you couldn't go interact with, you know, the number five quarterback in the NFL like someone could interact with you. You know what I mean? It's just – Yeah, no, it's, I understand. It's, uh, it's just different. So – Hopefully, hopefully, the, you know, the Ortega fight will happen. Makes sense. You guys, like you said, you're both uh, hot streaking it, and you're, you're the new blood. You're what's what's next, I mean, for the division. Um, I do want to give you uh, the floor for a minute. Any any shout-outs you have, anybody you want to say thank you to, um, you could definitely name them better than I would be able to. So uh, the, the floor is yours. Yeah, just as far as me, I, I, I just appreciate uh you know, of course, my, my wife and my, my mom and, you know, all my friends and family, sponsors and supporters, like everyone that's, you know, been there for me since the beginning, you know, it's, uh, it, it's it, everyone's believed in me so much and, and my coaches and knew what I was capable of. And they were, you know, backing me since I was, a, you know, an amateur fighter and they, they knew what I was uh, gunning for. And I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm close, I'm getting there closer and closer to my my ultimate goal, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not there yet, but I, I just, they know who they are. Uh, so I just want to say thank you to them and everyone that, uh, you know, yeah, just everyone that's been there for me since the beginning. Well, as for me, uh, everybody, you can catch up with Josh, uh, on social media, 
definitely follow him after the holiday. I can't figure anything but big things and super fights are to come. Uh, you can follow me at Nick Tortella MMA, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, Josh, again, thank you for uh, carving a little bit of time out of your out of your day. I know you got a big trip coming, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll definitely be revisiting this conversation after your next fight. Yeah, any any time. Thanks for having me on, Nick. Uh, anytime, Josh.